So it is 7.34 p.m. I will go ahead and start off the meeting. <clears throat> so today is Tuesday, December 21st, 2021. This is the meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Good evening. My name is Christian Klein. I am the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I'd call this meeting of the board to order. Uh, first, I'd like to confirm all members and anticipated officials are present. Uh, members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, Roger DuPont. Here. Patrick Hanlon. Here. Kevin Mills. Here. Dan Riccadelli. Here. Welcome. And Venkat Holy. Here. Welcome. Uh, on behalf of the town, uh, Rick Ballarelli, our board's administrator. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, sir. And uh, Vincent Lee is here as well from the inspectional services. Good to see you. And then just to confirm that uh, we have people here for the various cases uh, appearing for 28 Ottawa Road. Uh, Brian Key. Here. Okay, good to see you. Uh, appearing for 41 Oldham Road, uh, Garin Laurie Kalanian. Here. Yeah. All right, thank you both. Um, and then appearing for 66 Freeman Street, uh, Robin Biggs and Nathaniel Fuller. Hi. Hello. Hi. Good evening. Okay, so this open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely consistent with an act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency signed into law on June 16th, 2021. This act includes an extension until April 1st, 2022 of the remote meetings provisions of Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, which suspended the requirement to hold all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed to continue to participate remotely. Public bodies may continue to meet remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom application with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and um, it will eventually be available on ACMI. Uh, please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference. Other participants are participating by computer audio or by telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that folks may be able to see you, your screen name or another identifier. Please take care to not share personal information. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask you to please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. As chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. And as the board will be taking up new business at this meeting, as chair, I make the following land acknowledgments. Whereas the Zoning Board of Appeals for the Town of Arlington, Massachusetts discusses and arbitrates the use of land in Arlington, formerly known as monotomy, an Algonquin word meaning swift waters, the board hereby acknowledges the Town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous peoples from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. At the end of November, uh, this board lost three very valuable members, Sean O'Rourke, Aaron Ford, and Stephen Revelack, had all issued letters of resignation at the conclusion of the Thorndike Place hearing. Uh, I'd like to thank them one last time for their contributions to this board and to our town. But I'm very pleased to announce that the select board voted last night to approve two very experienced members of our town to fill two of the open positions on the board. Uh, I'd like to introduce them to the board and ask them to briefly introduce themselves. So um, coming to joining the board as a full member um, is Dan Riccadelli. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Dan Riccadelli. Uh, my wife and I have lived in Arlington for the last five years and I'm excited to get involved uh, in town government. Um, I'm an architect, uh, a registered architect in Massachusetts. I've been working in architecture in, in and around Boston for the last 13 years. Uh, and very often, uh, I'm in the position to present to boards like this one. So uh, I'm excited to advocate for Arlington and the rest of the residents here. That's great, welcome. Very glad to have you. And joining the board as an assistant member uh, is Venkat Holi. 
Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm an architect, as, as Dan is, um, a registered architect in Massachusetts and Maryland. I was in Maryland, that's where I got my registration done before I moved here. Um, been in Arlington for the last six years now. Um, I've worked for, as a project architect for uh, the architectural team um, uh, in Chelsea, Massachusetts. Um, I'm happy to join here and be on the other side now <laughs> in view of uh, presenting some of these to the towns. So excited about this opportunity. Thank you so much and welcome. Thanks. I welcome you both on behalf of the board. And I truly appreciate your taking part in your first hearings less than 24 hours after your appointment. <laughs> so before moving on to other administrative items on our agenda, I wanted to note that the two hearings that were continued from November 23rd to this hearing will be heard on Tuesday, January 11th, 2022. Due to the change in membership on the board, we were unable to provide a full slate of members able to still vote on those cases. We've asked those applicants to revise their applications without prejudice so they can be heard by the newly constituted board in January. And I just want to express my appreciation for their understanding and their patience. I would also like to make the board and the public aware that an appeal to the board's decision on the Thorndike Place comprehensive permit application submitted by Arlington Land Realty LLC was filed in Middlesex Superior Court. Uh, the board's written decision was filed with the town clerk on Wednesday, December 1st, 2021, starting a 20 day window for filing an appeal. The newly filed case O'Driscoll et al versus Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals et al was noticed to the town clerk this afternoon, December 21st, 2021, being the final day to file an appeal. Um, I have spoken briefly with town council and he will be briefing the board at a future meeting to discuss the particulars of the case. And depending on the nature of that discussion, the board may enter an executive session to discuss legal strategy and any responsive pleadings that might need to be filed. So we will see where this, this process takes us. Okay, so going back onto our agenda, um, we're going to move on to number three, which is um, administrative item. Uh, so as we start with the administrative items, including the approval of decisions and the approval of minutes, these items relate to the operations of the board and as such will be conducted without input from the general public. The board will not take up any new business on prior hearings, nor will there be introduction of any new information on matters previously brought before the board. Uh, after introducing each item, I'll invite members of the board to provide any comments, questions, or motions they may have. If members wish to engage in discussion with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself for the record. First administrative item we have this evening uh, is number three on our agenda, which is the approval of the meeting minutes from August 3rd, uh, 2021. These were distributed by um, Rafael Arelli back on November uh, 23rd. For the board's review. Um, I know Rick has received comments from several people. Are there any further comments on the minutes from August 3rd? <coughs> Being none, I, I move to approve those minutes. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Helen. Uh, so I'm just going to ask for a vote of the members who were, <coughs> excuse me, present at that meeting. So Roger DuPont. Aye. Uh, Patrick Hanlon? Aye. Uh, Kevin Mills? Aye. The chair votes aye. That is approved. Move to item Mr. number four. Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Hanlon. Um, I wasn't the one who was actually seconded that. Oh. So um, somebody else did. I heard it, but it wasn't me. No, it was Mr. Mills. Thank you for that correction. Uh, so the next set of minutes is the minutes from August 24th, 2021. These were also submitted to the board on November 23rd. Are there any further questions or comments on that? Seeing none, I will move to approve those minutes. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. <laughs> uh, vote of the board, uh, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Chair votes aye. Those minutes are approved. Brings us to item five, approval of the meeting minutes from October 12, 2021, and submitted November 23rd for board review. Are there any further questions on these minutes? Seeing none, I will move to approve those minutes. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. 
Uh, vote of the board, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills. Aye. Chair votes aye. Those are approved. Brings us to item six on our agenda approval of the meeting minutes from our October 20th meeting. Um, those were submitted November 23rd for review by the board. Are there any further questions from the board? Seeing none, we'll move to approve. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Vote of the board, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills. Aye. Chair votes aye. Those are approved. Just item seven on our agenda. Uh, approval of meeting minutes from November 9th, 2021. We're catching up. Um, these were again submitted November 23rd. Um, we'll review any further comments from the board. Seeing none, I will move to approve. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Uh, vote of the board, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills. Aye. The chair votes aye. Those minutes are approved. This brings us to item number eight on our agenda, which is the approval of the decision for 911 Adams Street. Uh, this is a decision that was prepared by Mr. Hanlon um, and distributed to the board for questions and comments. Um, and I know those have uh, come back and I believe Mr. Hanlon, you did issue a revised version of the decision? I did. Um... I believe it was Saturday or Sunday. Okay. Are there any further questions on those on that decision? Seeing none, may I have a motion to approve? Mr. Chairman, I move that the the uh, decision for 911 Adams Street be approved. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Uh, the second was Mr. Dupont, I believe. Yes. Uh, so vote for the board, Mr. Dupont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills. Aye. And the chair votes aye. That is approved. Brings us to item number nine, vote to approve the decision at 125-127 um, Webster Street. Um, <clears throat> so this was a decision that prepared again by Mr. Hanlon, distributed to the board for comment and reissued, I believe today in a final version. Yes. Um, are there any further questions on this decision? Seeing none, may I have a motion to approve, please? Mr. Chairman, I approve that the decision in 125 Webster Street be approved. Thank you, may I have a second? Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Uh, so vote on that one as well. Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. And the chair votes aye. That decision is approved. Brings us to item number 10, approval of the decision for 137 Robbins Road. Again, this was prepared by Mr. Hanlon, distributed to the board for comment uh, and issued again as a, in a final draft, I believe this past weekend. Yes. Are there any further questions or comments on this decision? Seeing none, may I have a motion to approve? Mr. Chairman, I move that the decision in 137 Robbins Road be approved. Thank you very much. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Uh, vote of the members present uh, at that hearing. Roger DuPont? Aye. Uh, Patrick Hanlon? Aye. And the chair votes aye. So that final decision is approved. Um, so on those three, um, Mr. Vellarelli, we're going to have to still include uh, some of the past members. They can still sign, even if they're not current members, because they were members at the time of the decision. That's correct, Mr. Chairman. I understand that. Perfect. So, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I'd just like to state for the record that, uh, of course, the past members, the ones who are no longer on the board, but who were on the panel that originally decided that, have all uh, been afforded a copy, uh, as everyone else has, of the uh, draft decisions. And to the extent to which they had comments, they have been incorporated into the finals that we just approved. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. So I'm going to hold off on item 11 and come back to that at the end. Um, this brings us on to item 12 on our agenda, which is docket number 368128 Ottawa Road. And before we start, <clears throat> uh, we're now turning to the public hearings on tonight's agenda. There's some, some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of tonight's business. 
After I announce each agenda item, I will ask the applicant to introduce themselves or themselves and to make their presentation to the board. I will then request that members of the board ask what questions they have on the proposal. After the board's questions have been answered, I will open the meeting for public comment. At the conclusion of public comment, the board will deliberate and vote on the matter. And so the first, this, uh, as I said, is number 12, is docket number 3681, 28 Ottawa Road. Uh, owner, I believe, is Mr. Cape. If I could ask him to introduce himself and tell us what you'd like to do. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Brian Kate. I'm one of the homeowners of 28 Ottawa Road. The project that I'm bringing before the board is hopefully non controversial. We have a uh, set of steps in the front of the house leading up to the front door that are in need of replacement. Uh, we would like, they are uncovered steps at the moment. We would like to cover them. And in doing so, uh, we believe that extending that covered area to the full width of the house as a uh, porch would be uh, more functional for us and uh, would be largely consistent with the neighborhood in the style of house that we have. Uh, we are seeking relief for projection into minimum yards, uh, and otherwise, I'm, you know, uh, will welcome any questions you have about the project. But I think it's relatively straightforward. Thank you. I will go ahead and share the, uh, the application. It's a photo of the front of the house. So this is the, the plot plan. So on the left is the existing, on the right is the proposed. Um, so uh, may I make one, sorry, may I make oh, one please. comment about the plot plan? Yes, please do. Um, I, you'll notice that the one on the left is actually incorrect. Uh, it's from a previous plot plan. This was not discovered until last week and the surveyor is going to correct it. But the one on the right, everything behind the porch is, is the existing uh, structure. You'll notice that there's a large addition that we did two years back. And there's a shed rather than a concrete pad in the backyard. But none of that is part of this proposal. Thank you for that clarification. Sure. Uh, so the portion that the, the board is concerned with um, and the proposed is the proposed open porch and the steps at the front. Um, That's correct. Perfect. Uh, so this is a detail. And front elevation. Both side elevations. <clears throat> Are there questions from the board? Uh, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Mills? I just have a suggestion to the applicant. I know he's uh, specifying a bluestone landing. Bluestone really, in my experience, does not hold up all that well to our winters and salt and refreezing. It tends to spall over time. He may want to think about something more resilient. Just to, just a comment. Well, thank you. Thank you. The uh, landscaping and hardscaping is not is not yet set in stone, so to speak. So uh, I, I do appreciate the suggestion. <laughs> Are there any other questions from the board? So just for uh, I guess general edification, so the open porches um, are allowed to extend into the into the minimum front yard, and if they're beyond a certain size, then they need a special permit from the town, and that's the, the reason that this is um, in front of this board this evening. If there's no further questions from the board. I'm going to go ahead and proceed with public comment. Um, so before I open the meeting for public comment, uh, just a couple 
Notes, uh, public questions and comments will only be taken as they relate to the matter at hand. It should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing our decision. Members of the public will be granted time to ask questions and make comments. Chair asks that those wishing to address the board a second time during any particular hearing, please be patient and allow those wishing to speak for the first time to go ahead. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the participant tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, please dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. You'll be called upon by the meeting host. You'll be asked to give your name and address and you'll be given time for your questions and comments. All questions are to be addressed through the chair. Please remember to speak clearly. And once all public questions and comments have been addressed, the public comment period will be closed. And the board and staff will do our best to show documents being discussed. So looking at uh, folks who have their hands up, uh, first on my list is Mr. Moore. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, Steve Moore, uh, three, uh, Piedmont Street in Arlington here. Um, uh, I wanted to do as I often do with situations where I see a street tree in front of a house. Uh, I want to remind the applicant they need to protect the street tree with the correct root zone, critical root zone protection measures, which are um, available on the um, from the engineering department and the tree warden is in terms of uh, protecting the tree relative to construction. My guess is that when the applicant put on the uh, extension to the rear of the house a couple of years back, they were made familiar with this uh, requirement. And um, I just want to remind them they need to do it again for the porch, even though the porch is minimum construction, uh, we need to try and maintain the tree canopy in town. So uh, I just wanted to make that point. Um, as, as an aside, not on this case, I just want to say I am fortunately uh, unhappy to hear that there's been an appeal of the Thorndike decision place made for the town. You know, this board did quite a bit of work over quite a long time, and um, I'm a little surprised to hear that an appeal by another town commission has been, uh, has been filed after all that work. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Anyone else who wishes to speak on this matter? I see no hands raised. I see no one waving. I'll go ahead and close public comment. Um, so this is a fairly straightforward application. It's actually very similar to the house next door, which we saw uh, about a month, month and a half ago. Um, where they're just looking to, uh, to add a uh, farmer's porch essentially to the front of the building. It's a single story, unenclosed porch. Um, so any questions about the scope of work? Mr. Chairman, I had one question. Yes, please. Um, to the proposal. Um, I know that the, I, you know, I'm new to the commission, so I just, uh, let me know if, if this is a, a dumb question, but um, the the open porch condition um, is that is the exception uh, of open porches just for front yard um, setbacks or side yard setbacks as well. Valorelli, can you? Uh, that's a great uh, question, Mr. Riccadelli. Uh, welcome to the board with that uh, that question. <laughs> So uh, directing your attention to 5.3.9 projections into minimum yards. A, projecting eaves, chimneys, bay windows, balconies, open fire escapes, and enclosed entrances not more than 25 square feet in floor area or more than one story high, which do not project more than three and a half feet beyond the line of the foundation wall may extend beyond the minimum yards regu yard regulations otherwise provided for the district in which the structure is built. Enclosed entrances larger than allowed above may extend into the minimum yard regulations otherwise provided for the district by special permit. So to answer your question, it does not specify front yard only, it specifies minimum yard regulations, 5.3.9A. Thank, thank you so much. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I, will, 
what we have here is a porch and what Mr. Uh, Valerie Valley just read about had a lot to do with enclosed entrances. Uh, it's my understanding, and I wanted to see if Mr. Valerelli can confirm this, that there's a longstanding interpretation from the Inspectional Services Department that, a, a, that uh, providing a, a sort of a roof over the porch is sufficient to make it, make it considered a, a closed entrance. Uh, for purposes of, uh, of of the zoning ordinance. Is that a correct understanding, Mr. Valerelli? That's absolutely correct, Mr. Hanlon. The uh, inspectional services uh, identifies a roofed structure as an enclosed structure. Yeah. May I make a comment? It's okay. Yeah, uh, sorry. So the, this this word unenclosed um, certainly tripped me up when I was reading the bylaws. Uh, the next time, perhaps the document is is modified, we might take care to specify that the roof counts as an enclosed structure. Certainly changed our plans once we did realize that after talking to Ms. Val Mr. Valerelli, uh, so uh, perhaps making it more clear would be helpful in the future. Well taken, and actually, this is the the right time of year as the um, the town meeting warrant is going to be opening up at the beginning of January if it's not open already. Okay. Um, so we do have a memorandum from the. Uh, Department of Planning and Community Development. Um, and so they issue uh, <clears throat> excuse me, memoranda on all of our special permit cases. Uh, and re they review the different criteria that the board is required to present findings on. And then they make a recommendation, which is solely the, the recommendation of that, of that um, department and is not necessarily the, the opinion of the board. Um, in this case, uh, they maintain the proposals consistent with the zoning bylaw and recommend um, the board can approve the, the application. Um, <clears throat> so typically um, for uh, decisions of the board, there are three standard uh, conditions that the board applies um, to such permits. So um, if we were to move to approve, uh, we would there's several conditions. The first uh, would be that the plans and specifications approved by the board for the special permit shall be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with this application for zoning relief. There should be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, condition two, be the building inspector is hereby notified that he is to monitor the site and should proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time he deems that violations are present. The building inspector shall proceed under section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw and under provisions of chapter 40, section 21D of the Massachusetts general laws and institute non-criminal complaints. If necessary, the building inspector may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action also in accordance with section 3.1. And condition number three would be the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to this special permit grant. And in cases of uh, where we are doing front porches, um, we typically include a condition that the area of the proposed porch uh, shall not be considered within the foundation wall of the building. The open portion of the porch shall remain unenclosed. So. In, this case, but unenclosed, it, uh, the board is meaning that uh, you know this shall not walls shall not go up around the the, the side in front of the porch. Um, so I would uh, recommend uh, the board consider those four um, conditions. Are there any further conditions from the board, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hanlon. I'm afraid that that my effort to get to my word uh, file is not being very successful, but I do recall that we often have a condition that refers to 
uh, that the uh, building the building out the porch doesn't extend where the where the foundation wall is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I missed that, but uh, I think that that we ought to be including that condition as well. So I think that was that was part of the same one that the the area that proposed porch shall not be considered within the foundation wall of the building. I see. And then the open portion of the porch shall remain unenclosed. Um, okay. So I, if I could just add, recommend to the board, I think it's perfect. I don't think it's a good idea to wordsmith on the fly, uh, but it's awkward to use the word enclosed when, in one context, it has a defined meaning by the ISD to refer to just a roof, and we don't mean that here. Um, so if if the board would give me some liberty in writing the opinion, um, I would like to tinker with that language so as to make make it clear uh, that 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 this is not enclosed within the established ISD understanding of that word. I think that would be appropriate. Any further conditions? If not, the board will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I move that the board approve this application subject to the conditions that uh, the chair has, has just read into the record. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Is that a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Any questions on what the vote entails? Seeing none, we'll do a roll call vote of the board. Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Mills. Aye. Mr. Riccardelli. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Uh, so the special permit for 28 Ottawa Road is approved as conditioned. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. You're quite welcome. This brings us to Item number 13 on our agenda, docket number 3682, 41 Oldham Road. <clears throat> uh, if I could ask uh, the Talinians to um, introduce themselves and tell us what they would like to do. Hi, I'm Gar Talanian. My wife Lori's here. Hi. And uh, hi, <laughs> we uh, intend to renovate 41 Oldham Road and live there, um, looking for relief from two um, items. One, the it's a large, termed a large addition in Arlington, over 750 square feet. And secondly, the um, front setback, uh, similar to the last uh, hearing is a front porch uh, setback. We're looking for approximately three extra, three, three feet to make the porch, the front farmer's porch more functional. very much. Let me quickly just bring up the drawings. Existing floor plans. New basement plan, new first floor plan, second floor plan, roof plan, front and rear elevations, side elevations. Okay, so this is the <clears throat> sitting house, and then you had alluded to both the uh, the porch at the front, eight feet by forty-two feet, 
and then just overall it's the the large edition yep uh, mr valerelli were there any concerns in regards uh to, it's just going to be a two-story building is that correct yes. yes okay perfect thank you um so first question i have i was there on sunday afternoon um and it does appear there are some recently cut down trees um, here on the side. Um, were those removed with this addition, with this work in mind, or was there an issue with those trees? Uh, you you answer that. Oh yeah. So the side tree was um, the it was two trees. Uh, one two trees. One one tree was split. And then the tree beside it was rotting out. Okay. And I had four um, people come out, some of which do work on the town. They weren't town employees though. Mm -hmm. um, and they, one of the trees are like, we can get the tree down by January, possibly. I hope the tree doesn't fall. That's how oh, okay. roaded the base was. So then I asked them, you know, if I take that one bad tree down, the root system was all together. And he's like, it, being that the tree was split, he thought, but all four people told me that th the tree should come down. Okay. And that's why we took it down. Um, primarily because of the danger of the one falling onto the neighbor's house. Okay. Um, the only other question I had was the, on, was the depth of the front porch. So eight feet is rather deep a front porch and I was just um want to sort of understand more sort of the, the 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 reasoning behind the size of that porch I guess it's just to um use it in sitting it put a chair there a table as well yeah. like a sitting area outside to use the space during COVID we've come to realize how valuable sitting outside with your neighbors is <laughs> Thank you. Uh, questions from the board? Not seeing any at the moment. With that, I'll go ahead and um, open up for public comment. Again, uh, those wishing, members of the public who wish to speak can digitally raise their hand using the button on, I believe it's the participant tab uh, in the Zoom application. And those calling in by phone can dial star nine to indicate you'd like to speak. You'll be called upon uh, by the chair. You'll be asked to give your name and address and be given time for your questions and comments. Uh, so first on our list is Mr. Moore. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street and a member of the Arlington Tree Committee. Um, I would like to ask the applicant for you, uh, is, is Oldham Road a public way or a private way? We're on the public way. Okay. Side of it. it it's the answer it's is both. both. Yes. It's both. The lower yes, the street, towards the Winchester line is a uh, private way, and you you'll notice the uh, lack of nice pavement on the private part. And <laughs> the town does a nice job paving in front of this house. Yeah, that is uh, certainly often the case, Mr. Chairman. Um, there are two street trees I see uh, that are uh, on the street there that are gonna require protection for this uh, significant construction job. So um, I, I, don't, I don't think there are any trees in front of this house. There's no trees. They were, there was one that was taken down, I think three years ago at, during a, a microburst situation. The, the, the town took it down, the yeah. town took it down. Oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I looked on uh, Google maps and there were two, mm -hmm. trees. one that, was on the property line with the 42 Oldham and uh, one that was, it looked like it was in front of 41 Oldham uh, next to the driveway, but maybe it's not there now. I, I was just looking on Google Maps. Um, okay, uh, just if you said that there is no street trees? No, there isn't. Nope. We would we would uh, entertain having one if you want yeah. to put one there. 
Uh, well, they are certainly available from the town by a, a, a request. Um, okay. First come, first serve, but the, the town will put street trees uh, on the street in the setback at the request of uh, um, at the request of the abutters, as long as you folks agree to water it. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. The map again, and there's a there is definitely one next to the driveway and one on the other side of the driveway as well. Hmm. Nope. I think there was originally, but they were all taken down. The town did take them down for, with the previous okay. owner. All right. Well, uh, thank you. Um, that leads me to a second question, which is the trees that the chairman uh, referenced that have been taken down recently. Um, the two trees that are on the side there that I guess have both been taken are large trees. They're in the setback and they're covered by the uh, town tree bylaw. Um, and certainly a, a rotted tree uh, makes sense to take it down since it's a danger. However, the second tree does not make sense to take down. Um, I suggest you talk to the tree warden because it sounds to me like you've run afoul of the tree bylaw, um, which means unfortunately there will, there will be a, a, a fine to be paid because they are in the setbacks. Uh, and uh, uh, you need to get in touch with him. His name is Tim O'Cueve. He'll come out and look at the tree and see if he can confirm what you were told by the four tree workers. Um, mm -hmm. Fortunate thing about tree remover folks is they're in the business of removing trees and um, don't necessarily have the maintenance of the town tree canopy in mind when they do their work. Um, so you'll need to get in touch with him uh, and the trees are already taken. So I don't know if a tree plan at this point is required. It would have been required had the trees not been taken yet. But since now um, uh, you're, you're front of foul of the law, I, a tree plan probably isn't required. You'll need to get in touch with the, the tree warden about dealing with the, the taking of those two trees that are already taken. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, next on our list um, is Ms. Uh, Kristen McMillan. Hi, good evening, Mr. Chairman and the board. Uh, my name is Kristen McMillan. I'm actually the daughter of Janice McMillan, who is the homeowner of the house that is in the rear of 41 Oldham Road. Um, and with regard to the trees, I'd like to actually address that matter if I might. Uh, my mother received a handwritten note several weeks back uh, from, I believe, the current homeowners, uh, letting my mother know, not asking for permission to enter her property to remove said trees, but uh, informing her that those trees were going to be removed. She received that note in the, on, I believe, a Sunday evening, and she leaves for work at 6.30 in the morning, and by the time she returned home from work, the trees were gone, um, which is not so much her concern. What her concern is, is that the people who removed said trees actually cut branches off of her existing trees uh, and did damage to some of her uh, foliage that she has in the back of her home. Uh, that's the first concern she has. And, and also, I went out back today to take a look at that. And one of the trees that was cut down, the stump of it is, is a perfectly healthy stump. So. I'm not sure what the purpose of removing that tree was. The second concern that my mother has is she received notice just last night about today's hearing. So obviously we did not have uh, a significant amount of time to prepare to address the board today. But one of her concerns is the sheer magnitude and size of the addition that the current homeowners are hoping to put on their house, nearly doubling the current house in size. Also, I believe if looking at the square footage is correct, it, it is going beyond, uh, and I could be wrong, but again, I did not have a lot of time to review all the materials. It looks like it goes beyond what would the, be the, excuse me, what would be the allotted amount of square footage or distance from the property line to the home. Um, so I know that a few letters were enclosed in the paperwork that was provided uh, to the board <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, a couple of those letters indicated that the size of this house would be in line with recent builds. My mother has two brand new homes that were just recently built across the street from her, uh, and the square footage that they are suggesting is well over a thousand, 
or better square feet larger than the two homes that were just built brand new within the last year and a half. I also had the opportunity to speak to the elderly neighbors uh, to the right of my mother's home. And they are also concerned with the size of this renovation that is being suggested. It, and to be clear, my mother is not, you know, she is not opposed to there being renovations done to the home or uh, increasing in size. She is simply concerned about the portion of the renovation that will encroach on her personal space in the size of um, the addition that's going to be put on the rear of the house. And I appreciate the letters that were sent by the other homeowners, but they will be looking at the front facade of the house and not the rear, which will be taking up a significant amount of backyard that they have currently. Thank you. What, what is your, um, your mother's address? 46 Lantern Lane. Rick, was that included in the, in the abutters list? Give me a minute, Mr. Chairman. I have that list here. I'm sorry, what was that number of Lane again, please? Number 46. 46. 46. Yes, that was on the list and those mailings went out. Oh, I don't know at least uh, 10, 14 days ago. She just received the notice last night when she got home from work. Yeah, I apologize for that. I don't know what the reason is, but uh, we're very diligent on getting those notices out. They do have to go through central mailing at the uh, town hall. I don't know what that process is. Um, usually this is, uh, we usually don't get a complaint that the uh, notice was re received this late. My apologies. Um, this is the first. Thank you. I appreciate the apology. Anything further? Uh, I don't think so. I think the only, I think last note that I would make is, you know, my mother has had, uh, unfortunately, due to a lot of the construction, had some structural damage to the foundation of her house, which she just recently repaired once all of the construction was done. And so I think she does have some concern how this might now impact further damage to her foundation. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, um, I'd like to ask Mr. Ms. Excuse me, Ms. McMillan, uh, what is the rear, trying to figure out the distance between where this, where the addition would put it, which uh, I gather is still within the zoning envelope and where and how much backyard number 46 has. And I, I gather number 42 is quite similar, uh, but number 50 is quite a bit bigger. So if you could provide us with some kind of information as to the, as to, um, as to, as to those distances. The, the reason I, just to be clear about it, is the reason why it is you have a special permit requirement for large additions is the possibility that a building that might be entirely within the appropriate dimensional requirements uh, could, with the addition, uh, still uh, unreasonably dominate uh, uh, neighboring properties. And that sort of is what is being claimed here. Um, but just the physical distance between the two structures is relevant to that. And so if you can give me some indication of what that would be, that would be useful. I have to be very honest with you. I apologize. I don't know the distance. Again, because we got such short notice, I tried to date, make sort of a judgment call today. It's, it's, it's hard to tell without having, you know, accurate measurements. And okay. I apologize for that. Again, we're, we're in a difficult situation because we just received the notice last night. I'm certainly happy to, to try to get that information to the board as soon as possible. And what you're asking is how much distance between the house to the property line, correct? Yes, right, because if I know that, I okay. can, with arithmetic, figure out <laughs> what the other distance is. Um, okay. do, can you describe to me what number 50 is like? That look, that's a house with a, which on Google Maps looks like it's substantially larger, at least in terms of footprint 
and uh, I like to get a sense of of uh, of mm -hmm. how big that that property is. Are you asking me that question? That that yeah. property that property is uh, so that property is is quite large actually, and I believe takes up a good portion of the physical property of uh, the homeowners. Uh, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of living space, so to speak. I don't know the exact measurements. Uh, what I what I do know is that at least the ver the height of the house went to the absolute max that it could. That is the one thing that I do know. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else who wishes to speak on this matter? I have someone who wishes to speak for a second time. I just want to check first. Seeing none, uh, Mr. Moore for a second time. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to uh, um, apprise uh, Ms. McMillan. I, I, I think that's your name. I know you said you were the daughter. Uh, uh, that uh, if the branches that were taken from the trees that I guess are actually located on your mother's property, lot 44 there on Lantern Ave, um, as long as the branches cross the property line, the neighbor is allowed to take the branches at their property line, but not beyond. Um, that's that's the way the uh, not the tree bylaw is is uh, that's the way the uh, tree laws are in the, in the state of Massachusetts. They can't trim trees beyond their property line, but if a branch in, in basically encroaches on their property, they can trim them at the line. Just that's that's sort of the rule. Um, an additional question, though, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. um, it looks like there are a lot. There are trees on the on the rear of this property in the setbacks. Uh, it's hard for me to see because again, I was using Google Maps, and if the first map was was aged and not accurate, I apologize because the second map might be as well. Uh, it looks like there are trees back there, and um, I don't know if the addition. It doesn't look like the addition necessarily will encroach on those trees based on what I can see. However, if the trees are in the setback and it's gonna be a significant amount of work that requires access to the rear of the property by heavy equipment, those trees are gonna to have to be protected. Could I please ask the applicant for you if there are trees in the back of the property within the setback? I'm happy to ask that question for you. Okay. Yeah. So there's there's two trees. There's a maple tree and an oak tree um, in the far left corner. I, know, I wouldn't say like, so I don't know if they're part of the setback, but those are the trees that were there. Uh, I don't know what other trees. Yeah. The plot plan is showing three 24 inch trees in that. Sort of oh, I'm sorry. I, I was having trouble interpreting those dots as trees. Okay, my mistake. Uh, and then this one over here, this 12 inch on this side of the property. Yeah. Uh, okay, Mr. Chairman, I would like again to remind the, uh, the applicant, since those are in that back, uh, I, it sounds like there's not going to be encroachment there by the addition. However, again, being the setback, they need to be they need to be protected in terms of construction. Mm -hmm. uh, the tree warden that you'll have to talk to already uh, will be able to tell you about what sort of tree protection measures you need to do to make sure that heavy equipment does not damage those trees in the setback. Okay. 100%. Go back to. Um, so these are, this is the, the table um, zoning requirements. So it's a single family residence. Uh, the existing gross floor area of the house is listed at 3,723. They're proposing to go to 5,946. Um, 
the lot coverage would go from 16 to 25% with a maximum of 35% for the district. Um, the front yard is a minimum 25, and that's what they're requesting. Um, the 21.8 would, is for the special permit for that. Uh, the left side and the right side are both compliant with the side yard setbacks. Uh, currently, the rear yard is 45 and a, approximately 45 and a half feet, um, and they're proposing to reduce that to 21 feet, um, where the minimum is 20 feet. And going from one and a half to two stories, but still stay within the max. And then the height increasing from 18 to 32. Um, it's essentially a you know, as it is currently just a, you know, a, um, it's essentially a single story house with a lower space. Um, there's no concerns about the amount of landscaped open space or usable open space. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mills. The frontage figure, it changed. Isn't that the lot frontage figure? I'm assuming that should be 10798 for both. They should be the same. I can't see the lot size changing. Yeah. No, no, no. In the front. Yeah, it looks like it's looks like it should be for both. Mm -hmm. Right, because this shouldn't change. Mr. Chairman. Uh, one second, Mr. Hanlon. Uh, is okay. there any other one? Any other public comments? Okay, seeing now, go go ahead and. Oops. Sorry. This, yeah. So I apologize. I'm actually my mother just uh, called me to want wanted me to be clear. Uh, I think I was, but she wanted me to just clarify. One of the trees that they cut down was in my mother's backyard, so she just wanted me to clarify that. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, well, in the rear of the house. She just wasn't sure if I was clear about that. Okay. Thanks for that clarification. Um, do I have one other uh, person wish to speak? Uh, Stephen Sack, Stack, excuse me. Uh, yeah, hi. So, I'm the contractor that's going to be doing the work on 41. Uh, okay. Golden Road, and I understand the situation with the trees, but it's really um, the front porch. I thought was the question. I think we stayed in in guidance on everything, mm -hmm. so it was just the front porch. I mean, again, this tree situation is completely yeah. separate. No, no, no. It's just that you know it was it was raised as a as a as a question, so we're just trying to. To understand the the tree situation, and as, as Mr. Moore had pointed out, um, you know, with regards to his position on the tree committee, it's it, it's something that needs to be addressed through the the tree yeah. warden. Yeah, um, but I think the, the the overall size that have that we still stayed underneath all the um, the restrictions, mm -hmm. even in the back. Um, so it was the front that was the only thing that was um, we were looking for, just to get that farmer's porch in. That is correct. Mr. Chairman? Yeah? I, I, I don't think that we should, I mean, you still need to get a special permit for the large addition, mm -hmm. even though it meets all of the dimensional requirements of, of the board. And if, if Mr. Stack is suggesting that, that, that he doesn't think that's the case, then he would be wrong about that. Uh, the porch is, and the, there are two separate really requests here. One of the porch, which we spent most of our time in the beginning talking about, but the discussion is really focusing more on the addition and the size of the addition. And again, to just say what I said before, the policy under here is that sometimes 
large additions, which still are within all the meet all the dimensional requirements, can unacceptably uh, dominate uh, nearby properties. It can easily happen if you shade out if you if you shade out the neighboring property, if if the spaces are too close, if there's no buffering, there's lots of reasons why that can yeah. take place. And those things are before us as well. Okay, I understand that. So, um, but some of the numbers that were being called out on the houses are not the numbers that are beside this house. So all the houses along this house are all those sizes. Correct. Um, so the issue here are the ones behind the house. Correct. But I'm just saying that it, I'm, the only reason I'm saying this is so that we don't concentrate on, you can't pick the two smallest houses on the street if there's also bigger houses on the street. Okay. Well, with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and close the public comment. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Moore. This would be time number three for me. Is that okay? <laughs> I, I am trying to move ahead, but go ahead. Very quickly, if uh, if the applicant cut down a tree on the neighbor's yard, the neighbor should has access to action. They shouldn't. That's illegal. They can't do that. So um, that's up to. I, I certainly think all that. Person. That's the first question. The, the, the second one uh, is the trees in the setbacks there. The building permit should not have been issued if there was not a tree plan completed. It's on the checklist, it's part of the requirement now. And trees were taken and quite recently, uh, they need to now generate a tree plan before they proceed. I'm not sure how they got a building permit without having a tree plan. Uh, it, it, that should have been addressed, not as part of the special permit, but rather getting the basic building permit for the house. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Um, yeah, so certainly anything tree related at this point really needs to, really is under the jurisdiction of the tree warden and needs to be followed up directly with the tree warden. Um, um, can I, excuse me, may, may I say something? Sorry, I can't see who's speaking. This is Lori Tulanian. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, so just to clarify, um, I tried several times to go to, uh, is it 46 Lantern? Mm -hmm. I went to their house twice. Um, nobody answered the door, which I, and there was people home, but nobody was answering. So that's why I did leave a note. Um, the tree that we're talking about actually was on our property. Uh, the former owner did not want to um technically the, the the fence that the former owner put up on our property now is about five five or six five feet i think or four feet into our um away from the property line so this tree was right up against our fence and it was also within our property line i just wanted to clarify that because mm -hmm. even though it was on the other side of the fence, it was still our property, according to the survey. Okay. State survey. And I would never take a tree from somebody's backyard. Boy, I wouldn't do that. And I also, one other thing I wanted to mention on the addition, um, it's actually not gonna be any um, higher than the house that is in place right now, because it's a, it's a single floor addition. It's not gonna have a second story on it. And it won't, so it won't be blocking any light any more than it's already being blocked by the house currently. Um, the looking at the site on Google Maps, there's a and a, a pool in the rear yard. Is that currently still there? No, that's right where the addition is. Is where they had a pool. Was, an above ground, they had with... an above ground pool. Above ground. Okay, I was curious where sort of the back wall of the proposed addition is relative to the position of that pool, just to get a sense as to the size. Yeah, I mean, I would say it's almost that on the exact site of the pool. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah.
to look at the side elevation of the house. Uh, this is from the 37 side looking essentially southwest. Um, so this is the proposed porch at the front and then this is the proposed rear, rear yard addition. Which maxes it out at 20 feet. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman? DuPont. So I just wanted to be clear since it was mentioned that there is a fence. And I believe that um, Mrs. Tulanian said that the fence is actually into her lot somewhere in the neighborhood of five feet. Is that correct? So it's, it's actually five feet beyond the fence is your property, but the fence is actually five feet closer to your, your house. So yeah, on my husband, my husband says it's not five feet. He thinks it's more like three, three, four, three feet, maybe four, but it's my, yeah, it's definitely three feet into our property line. So I believe on this site plan, it's this line here, this faint line yeah. is the line of the fence. Yes. And, and Beyond that, there's a stone wall, those old, the, you know, the, um, I don't know who, you know, the stone walls from 200 years ago are cut, dividing most of our properties up here. And, you know, I think the former owner wanted to make sure he didn't take that away, that, that look away from the, pre, the owner behind. So do you happen to know how long that fence has been in place? God. No idea, but they had a pool back there, so for a while. And do you think the fence was put up in conjunction with the pool, like to keep people out? Of the yes. Pool? I, well, I don't know as to keep I, people I don't know, out. Because it was an above ground pool. With, I don't know. It was. And, with and a... so I'm just curious, though, do we know then is the distance that I see off the back um, where it says proposed addition? on the site plan and it says 21 feet from the corner that's to the property line is that is that accurate i believe that's correct and so so what we're saying though is from the corner to the fence would be more in the neighborhood of 18 feet likely okay and it sort of goes beyond our purview, but I'm just wondering about what people have been doing with the land in between the fence and the property line. I mean, is that used for anything? No, it's a it's a rock wall. It's a non masonry rock rock wall. Okay, so it's not anything that the neighbors behind were using for any purpose. It was just sort of convenience that the fence was put there. Yes. And I think I think the wall, the the rocks were there. The original developer built the neighborhood in the fifties. Uh, just that's how they divvied the you know put put their extra rocks, big big rocks in in a loose wall. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Just just wondering. Shoot. So. For the, the the decision before the board here, um, so we have two separate requests for special permit. Uh, one relates to the size of the front porch and its location um, within the front yard setback, which we can, which is within our purview to grant. Um, and then the second is the uh, the large addition, uh, which is. Uh, both in the you know, above the main house, but also um, in the addition off the rear. So we do have um, a memoranda from the a memorandum from the uh, Department of Planning and Community Development in regards to this, um, which is a couple of 
questions. One is, um, you know, just that the the application may need to be referred to the engineering department um, in regards to storm water, just because it's going to increase the impervious area by 350 feet. Um, the, the plan department notes that uh, oh, in the last 20 years, at least nine homes on Oldham Road have been demolished and rebuilt. And several more have received substantial renovations. Additionally, immediately abutting structures on either side have large open front porches. Proposed addition of proposed front porch complement the style and pattern of other structures along Oldham Road. Um, addition is designed to renovate the existing structure from a ranch style home into a contemporary colonial. While the renovated structure will be significantly larger, the elements of the structure are adequately ornamented and balanced, and the force of the structure creating a welcoming appearance and improved its streetscape. Uh, that's in the in the opinion of the planning department. I'll go ahead and stop the share here. Um, so among members of the board, is there? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, for me, the major issue has to do with the large addition, not the porch. Uh, I think while eight feet is a little bit larger than we normally see, uh, it doesn't seem to be unreasonable to me. Uh, some of the risks of having a large porch are, are things that we can deal with and the conditions that we usually apply. Um, <clears throat> but that's kind of the tail wagging the dog because the large addition is a bigger issue. Um, and I, especially now that we're privileged to have three architects on the, on the board, uh, it may very, very well be something on which they could, they could set my mind at rest. But let me look, Mr. Chairman, at the, at the zoning ordinance. Uh, the provision on large, uh, uh, the provision on large additions. Uh, contains this sentence. In making its determination, the Board of Appeals shall consider, among other relevant facts, the proposed alteration or additions, dimensions, and setbacks in relation to abutting structures and uses and its conformity to the purpose of the bylaw as set forth in, in section 1.2. And sort of the classic case of where something may be in conformity with the dimensional requirements of the bylaw, but nevertheless uh, not be reasonable because it's too close to an extra, an, an extra houses when there's a large difference in the size of the houses. And when the distances between the two are, even though they're within the setbacks that are required by the, the bylaw, uh, are such that one tends to dominate the other. And this is largely a question of judgment. Uh, from the red letters we've received, the folks on Oldham Road seem to think that this is great in, in terms of compatibility with their neighborhood. But that's really a separate question than the question of, um, uh, than the question of its impact on the immediate uh, abutters. On that, all we have, to, all I have to go on, and I'm not an architect. Uh, all I can do is look at sort of where the the silhouettes are on Google. Uh, it looks to me as if there's a fairly substantial distance, uh, of a substantial rear yard in uh, uh, Ms. McMillan's house, uh, so that the two structures uh, would not be that close to one another. Um, it's also true that Ms. That Ms. McMillan and her neighbor to the right have somewhat smaller houses, and there are other larger houses even on Lantern Street as well. Um, and so I'm sort of left, and when I went out there, I didn't think to look at Lantern Street. I was looking at Oldham Road just the way all of the other documents are. Uh, and so I don't have a personal judgment that's based on looking out there from there's a, there's a, as I recall there's a fence here so that it's very difficult from Oldham Road to see all the way back to the way the situation is in the other so I must say I have a quandary that I'm not 
hostile to this. It seems to me that uh, uh, this is an interesting design and an interesting way of, uh, of really transforming this property uh, in, and it's imaginative and I, I, I sort of like it. Uh, but when and if I write an opinion favoring this, I have to say why it is I think that and why I think the board thinks uh, that taking into account these factors, uh, that there's not an unreasonable encroachment here. And I don't feel that on the basis of what we've discussed tonight, I, I personally am in a position of making an informed judgment on that. Um, and I sort of would like, it would very like, much like to involve in the discussion what, what the professional architects, the chair and our, our two new members uh, uh, might 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 think about this. It, it seems to me that this is at best a borderline case, but it's not totally implausible that this is the kind of case that the that the bylaw was attempting to address. Yeah. So looking Mr. at the, please. Uh, do you mind if I make a comment? No, no, go right ahead. So, so um, uh, just responding to Mr. Hanlon's uh, initial request, I, I think um, I think you know with structures that dominate other structures, especially with large additions next to older homes, um, uh, it's very likely that uh, a two-story structure can really look large if we don't bring down the roof line. And I think the design of uh, the proposed expansion at forty-one Oldham. Um, you know, reads still like a, a single a single story house with a second floor dormer condition, um, which will bring down the scale. Uh, and you know, I think especially um, in consideration of the the back abutter, um, having a a single story volume that gets closest to their property, I I do think helps with that uh, scale difference. Yeah, so if I, in the background, I've been looking at um, uh, the, go ahead and share this as well. Um, so this is from Town GIS. This is looking at the, um, at this neighborhood. So this is 41 Oldham. Um, the, are we're looking at by the town, so the, this is based on the assessor's information, which calculates things a little differently, but they're calculating the current gross floor area of the house is 5,153, um, which, you know, some of the other, it's at this 4432, this one's close to 8,200. Um, the 50 lantern that we had talked about before it's, it comes in at 78. Uh, 46 is around 3,000. So, you know, currently relative to other houses in the neighborhood, um, it's fairly comparable with the addition. It will certainly be larger than it is now. I don't think it would, you know, rise to the point where it's, you know, the largest um, on its block. Um, but, you know, currently there is more backyard space um, separating a lot of these homes. And this will certainly take into that in the way that, you know, what I'm imagining was an addition at 37 that also crept into the rear yard. And I agree with Mr. Riccardelli's um, assessment that having the piece that goes into the rear yard being a single story structure rather than a multi story structure is really helpful in terms of um, trying to sort of uh, break the scale of it down as it approaches the, the rear lot line. Um, I think if the you know, if the board has concerns about the still about the scale of that, the board can, um, <clears throat> you know, request that it not extend as far back. Um, so there's nothing on the second, there's no second floor. So it's really, it's just impacting the size of the proposed room, which is about 21 feet by 21 feet um, in that area. And then um, the other thing the board can do is the board could always 
uh, condition that a second floor not be allowed um, in that portion of the building. Um, so that, you know, in the future, if, you know, if the house was sold and there was a new, you know, new homeowner who wanted to just do a small second story addition over it, that they would not be allowed to, to do that. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, so there's a pretty, uh, based on looking at this map and you sort of have to imagine what would happen if the 40, the addition to 41 was brought back to 20 feet from the lot line. It's, it still seems to, this is, it still seems to me that there's a, there's a pretty, pretty long space between the 46 and, uh, and and 20 um and i just wonder whether i mean again i i, I wonder whether when, when we start that this seems to be an unacceptable uh uh and uh, an unacceptable uh degree of 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 encroachment i mean i, I the reason i asked Ms. mcmillan at the beginning what the rear yard was in was to get a sense of what that distance was, because this is, you know, it, it's not clear to me that that this would loom over that property, uh, uh, given the distances that were involved. Um, a second potential thing to maybe put in the mix is 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 if we've talked a lot about trees in terms of what trees aren't there anymore, but maybe. There's something to be said for for uh, uh, working out ways of providing additional buffering so as to uh, soften the uh, the uh, the impact uh, as well. Again, I when I I'm not convinced that this is a problem under the ordinance. Uh, it might be, and and I guess I'd like to uh, I'd like to know a little more about. Uh, about what these distances are. Mr. Chairman? Mr. DuPont. So if I heard you correctly, you said that the back single single story addition was roughly 21 by 21. Is that correct? I believe that's correct. I'm going to switch so back. Out of the entire increase in square footage, so we're talking about what 400 and change 400 square feet and change yes. and and so you know we're really looking at um an increase of 2200 and change so that 400 is really a fairly small portion of the total <laughs> and you know when i think you made a comment about you know conceivably somebody could bring that down in terms of the the length out toward the backyard, but even if you did that and cut it in half, you're really only changing everything by 200 square feet. So to me, that sort of a change is um, is not negligible, but it gets to the point where I'm I'm not sure it's appreciable. And and so I personally, in considering this, would not necessarily be in favor of suggesting a decrease in that because I just don't think we get that much by decreasing it. And I, I appreciate Mr. Riccardelli's uh, comments about the fact that it is a single story. And I agree with you, Mr. Chairman, that in the event that this were to be approved, I think it would have to be made clear in the decision that it was gonna have to be limited to the one story. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mills. Uh, yes, you know, looking at the uh, plot that you put up just previously, it looked like the backyards before you put the addition on was roughly 40 feet from the back of the house to the lot line for this house and the house behind it. So even with the addition of 20 feet, it's still 60 feet to uh, the McMillan's house, mm -hmm. it's substantial yeah. distance in my estimation. Uh, I believe this addition of 20 by 20 feet is very much in scale of everything. Uh, holding them to one story would be nice. 
and I think the rest of the design is actually very handsome and complementary to the neighborhood. It really does not look like a gargantuan out of scale house. Mm -hmm. It looks like a very interesting and handsome house, in my opinion. And I think would be an ex, you know, very good addition to the uh, neighborhood, in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mills. And, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Valarelli, if you know, if this house was being built as a new build, yep. um, with the exception of the porch at the front, there's nothing in this proposal that's not in compliance with the town bylaws. Is that a fair Absolutely assessment? Absolutely correct, Mr. Chairman, with the exception of farm sports. Okay. okay. Any further questions from the board? I have one question, Mr. Chair. Yes, the, the addition in the rear, um, is that a, a vaulted ceiling in that family space or is it a flat ceiling there? Um, a question for the... Question for the applicants. Applicants, it, yeah. It's a cathedral. A cathedral. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and the metal roof is what is happening in all the new newer addition portion, you know, with the dormers and, and you know, the shed dormers and the gable, is that... I know we're doing one over the front porch. I, I don't know what the architect has for the dormers, but. Okay. It looks from the drawings that the, the main roofs are, shing, are, are shingle and then the, sh the shed style the are all metal. Metal, okay. Um, one, one thing I just observed is um, the roof slopes are, um, the main roof slope for the main building is 12 by 12. And then the rest are scattered, meaning they're not consistent. Not that I'm deciding or dictating that it has to be consistent, but the 1812 in the rear, is, is there a reason why that's been dictated as 1812? Is there, um, that could be brought down or so? You know, I don't, I don't know, my, I have to ask my architect. Okay. This is the, the roof over that, <clears throat> excuse me, the roof over the rear addition, you mean? Yeah, the one story addition towards the north side. Okay. It says, it says 812. Is that right? 812, yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. I was just curious that he, I didn't see it, that being, that dictating every, anything else mm -hmm. there. So it's kind of independent of, the slopes there. So if one wants to reduce the, the volume, you know, or the shadow that's gonna cast on the south okay. side, it's a possibility. Yeah, it's, it's possible it was brought down just to make sure that that roof intersects the rear wall of the house and doesn't interfere with the- The other roof coming down. Above. Yeah. It's, it seems like it's just, just barely coming, you know, below the, face your board there. Right. Yeah, and the, and the eave line is set to tie in with the eave line at the rear of the house. Right. Can I show a no. So with all that in mind, um, It, it does, there's a sort of a couple of themes uh, in sort of the way the discussion among the board. So it seems in general with the overall massing, um, my, my sense is that the board seems to feel it's large, but it's not overly large um, in scale for the neighborhood. And also um, sort of in, in the general size and encroachment. Um, as was pointed out, it is within the, you know, for the most part within the footprint, uh, excuse me, the allowable setbacks uh, for the district. Um, there were several comments in regards to the rear, uh, the rear or yard addition, that it being single story, um, that if that was to be allowed, that the board should 
um, include a condition to cap that at a single story. Um, there was no other sort of general concern about the, in, the layout of the, of the addition on the house. Um, it was noted before that the, um, I believe the, the above ground pool is already gone. Um, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, the front porch um, at eight by 42 is, is rather large. Um, the, you know, in the previous application is only uh, six foot eight deep, um, which is already a little bit deep for what we typically see for farmers porches. But, you know, given the, the neighborhood, uh, given this, the setback that the house has against the street already and, um, you know, the owner's uh, intention to really sort of use that as a, as a meeting space, especially, um, you know, outdoor meeting space in the, in the public realm is sort of a, a uh, something, something we all need. Um, I think I could be persuaded that the eight feet is, is not overly large. Um, for the porch, uh, we did have considerable discussion about the trees, and I think um, that that needs to solely rest with the with the tree warden at this stage. Um, when the certainly the tree warden will need to sign off on the on the uh, not necessarily on the building permit application, but on the uh, there's a, a sign off list that the applicant will need to go through before they can get their building permit. They'll also need to speak with uh, the town engineer um, in regards to additional lot coverage uh, that will come as a part of this as well. Um, so if the board was to um, proceed to a vote to um, on this project, uh, I would recommend our standard three conditions, which we have already read into the, the record. I would also recommend um, or note that the, the area of the proposed porch shall not be considered within the foundation wall of the building and the open portion of the porch shall remain unenclosed, which I think we're going to massage now. So the open portion of the porch shall remain open. Um, we also, I would also recommend that the board uh, request the applicant work with the town engineer to address compliance with the town stormwater management bylaw and the board requests the applicant work with the tree warden to address compliance with the town's tree protection and preservation bylaw. Um, are there, is there, and then we had also discussed that the rear yard single story addition is to remain single story unless voted on by the board. So that would be so that is um, six conditions, the standard three, er, the porch remaining outside the foundation wall and remaining open, uh, and the, the applicant work with the town engineer, applicant work with the tree warden, and the rear yard single story addition is to remain single story unless voted on by the Board of Appeals. Are there any other conditions that the board feels would be appropriate for this project? Being none, may I have a motion in regards to this project? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I move that the application be approved subject to the uh, conditions that the chair has just enumerated. That is to okay. say the three standard conditions, the conditions relating to the porch, uh, the two requests uh, that for the uh, engineer and the tree warden and the uh, remaining a single story, the part in the back remaining a single story. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon, may I have a second? A second. 
Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Any questions about what the vote is? Seeing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. Riccardelli? Aye. And the chair votes aye. So uh, the special permit for the two special permits for 41 Oldham Road are approved um, with the seven conditions enumerated. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good luck. I do encourage you to Thank speak with you. the three warden as soon as possible. Oh yeah, oh, yeah we absolutely will. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Definitely. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, where's that for the agenda? Here's the agenda. <sighs> Item number 14, which is docket number 3683, which is 66 Freeman Street. Um, if I could, um, Ms. Biggs and Mr. Fuller, if you would like to introduce yourselves and tell us what you would like to do. Sure. Um, my name is Robin Biggs. My husband, Nathan Fuller. We live at 66 Freeman Street and are the petitioners for this request. Um, we have a non-conforming lot, so our lot does not meet the 25 by 25 open space, and that's why we are um, uh, requesting this special permit. Um, and we thank you for your consideration for our request to, to add usable square footage to our current our third floor with the installation of a shed dormer where there is currently finished um, space under the attic sloped roof. So um, our current third floor is finished space with two bedrooms, one bathroom and office and the current ceiling height is six foot um, three inches. And so the proposed dormer will raise the ceiling height um, to above seven feet for 590 square feet of that space. Um, uh, we've lived in this condo since 2015 when we moved here. It was a major fixer upper and um, it had been foreclosed at some point in its history. And so we've put a lot of sweat equity and money into it uh, to, to make it into our family home. Um, and we've renovated it in the 1920s style of the home. So we're very committed to keeping that 1920s charm of the original uh, building. Um, you know, we love living in East Arlington. Both Nathan and I work in Cambridge and we commute by bike and uh, public transportation to get to work. Um, all we have, uh, all together we have four kids, um, ages 17, 14, three and one. Um, so the two older children attended Hardy Elementary School and Audison Middle School. The oldest, Wilson, is at Minuteman High and a uh, 14-year-old daughter is at Arlington High School as a freshman. And so our, um, we plan to stay in this home uh, until the three-year-old and the one-year-old graduate Arlington Public School System. So we're looking to uh, expand the usable space in our third floor to make the home a little bit more livable and efficient uh, for our family of six. Okay. And uh, we are joined here as well by our contractor, Bob Terenzoni, uh, who's, who's joined the meeting as well to answer any, any uh, construction questions that you may have. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, so overall, so just the, so this is the, the site plan, um, there is, you know, in a, a line of, of houses, obviously there's a house immediately adjacent. This would be one of the first houses in the neighborhood to do um, the full side shed. Um, yes, in this, on the street, yeah. In the street, yeah. And then the only, um, the memorandum from the planning department. Uh, whoops, that's the wrong one. Noted just that 
that the shed dormers and additions are prevalent throughout the area. Uh, the most structures have only a single dormer instead of dormers on both sides of the roof, although not required by zoning, applicants encouraged to explore potential for minor adjustments to the location of the windows in the dormer to align better with existing windows on the side facade. Applicant encouraged to set back the front of the proposed dormer to align with the front of the existing dormer. Uh, these changes would improve. It would improve the renovated structure's contribution to the existing streetscape. So the this thing, yeah. So the currently, so the the bump out that's there now, sorry, wrong direction. Um, so it's the the front of the home is set back at this point. So the proposal is if. If you were to start the dorm, the shed dormer back at this point, um, obviously you would run into would you run you run into trouble with the access to the restroom, yeah. and you wouldn't have and a then, with the bed. Yeah, and then we couldn't we wouldn't be able to have a, another closet in there because currently there's a closet <laughs> right where the restroom door is drawn there. Oh, there's I a see. Closet like under the eaves. Because we originally considered that, but then we had a fourth child. So the two younger ones share this front, front bedroom. So increasing the square footage um, makes it a little bit easier for the two to share that one bedroom. No, absolutely. Is this rear roof deck, this at the attic floor level? Uh, the, it, yeah, so there's, there's currently an enclosed porch, one of the rear, the rear porch. Yep. Um, the first floor porch is just has a roof. It, it only has railings on the side. And then the second floor is fully enclosed with walls and a ceiling. And so the deck off the back would be um, on the roof. There's a flat roof there now. So we wouldn't be changing anything about that roof. Uh, it, it would just be putting a railing around the flat roof that already exists there on top of that uh, second story porch. Got it. Um, and so the existing, I was a little puzzled by the, the, the way the structure is proposed to, to support the, um, the dormer, but I'm assuming that the contractor has a good reason for doing it. So I will not second guess him. plan and then just to um so this is sort of the the, the typical um uh, sort of zoning sheet for uh for this neighborhood and for lots of portions of arlington where the lot size is small and the usable open space um is zero because the there is no area on the lot that is 25 by 25. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the Board of Appeals has uh, a longstanding um, uh, practice that the that um, you know additions the basically because you're doing an addition you're increasing the gross square footage you need to provide more additional open space um, you are currently non-compliant with regards to usable open space you are because it's zero um, but you're basically going from zero to a greater degree of zero. So um, the board does not typically find that that, um, that, that is making the, the, property, the, the project more non-compliant. Um, it's sort of an equal level of non-compliance. Mm -hmm. Are there questions from the board? Down our list, I see none. Um, with that, 
in mind. Let me go ahead and stop the share. And I will go ahead and open public comment um, for the project. So if you would like to be heard on this, um, please raise your hand using the button feature um, in Zoom. Or if you're on the phone, you can dial star nine. Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak on this matter? I do not see any. That will go ahead and close the public comment. Um, Mr. Valorelli, was there a note in regards to dumpster placement? Was that this? There, there was, Mr. Chairman. So one of the above others was concerned about the dumpsters being placed on the side of the house, either side of the house. Apparently, there may be an issue with that. The abutter had uh, no objection to the project itself, but had asked if the dumpster could be placed on the street. Um, it could be. Uh, it's, a, it's a stretch. It would take a uh, permit from the police department. But if we would make every attempt to ask the builder if he could put this uh, dumpster on the front lawn and, um, and, and support the neighbor's wishes that the dumpster be not be placed on either side of the house, if possible. Well, certainly it appears that the only side it could go on would be the driveway side because the yeah. other side would not be wide enough to support a dumpster. Correct. Okay. And we just had our front walkway refinished with beautiful Boston brick pavers. And so we'd hate to put the dumpster on our front yard. And we just planted a, um, a, uh, a flowering dogwood tree in the front yard as well. So not the greatest place for us to put it. <laughs> um, would it be possible to the would it be possible for the contractor to do to operate without a dumpster and just to uh, off to load into a, a truck every day? Um, uh, Bob says he's having a little bit of truck con connectivity trouble to to be able to to respond to that. Um, no dumpster. Uh, he says no dumpster truck removal. Um, not really sure if that means he can do truck removal or not, but um, yeah, so, oh, he says truck, okay. So he could potentially use a truck and, and not have a dumpster in the driveway. Um, yeah, we are aware of our neighbor's wishes not to have the dumpster in the driveway next to her home. Um, she, she doesn't like the dust from the, the dumpster. Right. And so we, we try in the past when we've done some you know junk removal we have covered it overnight um and uh you know try to keep the dust down mr chairman if i could yeah, just please. real brief uh the contractor high tech dom has been building in this town for i bet you for sure over 25 years maybe even longer uh not only is he aware of the rules as far as half story um uh, uh, great, uh, great work, great workmanship. And I do believe if my memory serves me correctly, he does have a dumpster truck uh, that can be brought on site and off site at the end of the day. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And Bob's texting me that, you know, we're, we are just lifting the roof. So he's cutting it and lifting it instead of removing the roof and replacing it with another roof. Um, so there's there's less um, debris that will be generated by this uh, renovation. He did that up the street for me a few years back. <laughs> <laughs> Are there further questions from the board? None, based on the discussion we've had um it's only the the three conditions that the board typically imposes we would want to to impose um and i think we would uh, put a condition um as the board if they're comfortable with um 
requiring the use? Oh, truck to remove construction debris at um, in place of using the dumpster. To avoid storage of trash. Like overnight. Storage of trash. That would read uh, would require the use of a truck to remove construction debris. Um, and can't read my own handwriting. Uh, to remove construction debris to avoid using a dumpster for overnight storage of trash. Okay. Anything else from the board? Seeing none, I have a motion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Move that the application be approved subject to the three standard conditions uh, plus the additional condition regarding the dumpster that the uh, chair just read into the record. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. May I have a second? second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Are there any questions in regards to what the vote is? Seeing none, we'll do a roll call vote of the board. Uh, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Mills? Aye. Mr. Riccardelli? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Uh, so that is an approval for the special permit for 66 Freeman Street with the four noted conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you for your time. This brings us, we will go back to item number 11 on our agenda. But as this is our last meeting of the year, I wanted to take a minute and reflect on the, the work the board has accomplished this year. Uh, Mr. Hanlon had a, some comments he wanted to make. Chairman, um, the, uh, I think we all know that this has been a really extraordinary year. Um, it's not usual that we have two fairly substantial uh, 40B applications. And in addition, somewhere around 40 regular cases, uh, some of which we actually didn't decide, but we had hearings on and they were eventually withdrawn. Um, and this is probably a couple of orders of magnitude more than, than we are accustomed to doing. And it is produced an enormous burden on the board. Um, and the board, uh, including the people who are not here tonight, uh, rose to the occasion, I thought. Uh, we did things as thoughtfully as we can. Um, I'm not going to say anything specific about any case that might be subject to litigation, but uh, it, we, we did our best to handle an extremely difficult and sensitive uh, uh, matter. And uh, the, the court will now decide whether we did that uh, appropriately or whether we were arbitrary and capricious. Um, and so we'll, we'll leave that to one side. Um, but forgetting for a moment the substance of all of this and not just the 40 Bs, um, the amount of effort that has gone into making this board responsive, helping to make our, our what we are the reasons for our decisions clearer, uh, uh, increase, uh, providing for new application forms that uh, correspond better and are more transparent to applicants. Um, all of this has, has really taken the board 
another step towards being, you know, the sort of board that Arlington uh, ought to have uh, that is attempting to enforce the rules uh, in an impartial way, and at the same time to do it expeditiously and uh, and courteously, uh, both to the applicants and to the individuals involved. And in all of this, um, uh, We'll come back to the, the punchline. I guess it's not really a punchline. We, the board had the assistance of people who went way beyond the call of duty. Um, and I wanted to ha take the opportunity to mention just three of them, although they aren't the only three. Uh, one of them is uh, Mr. Valarelli. Um, whose insistence is he's just been indefatigable and if you if if the public only realize such as what small portion of time he's paid for giving us you can just imagine all of the other stuff he must be able to fit into the 30 hour days that he must be working um it's it's been making this up as you go along we didn't have standard operating procedures and rick is there not just on the 40 b's but on every single case that we have helping us figure it out telling us what the rules are uh giving us all of the insight that we we saw tonight and he did it over and over and over again and it really is, was was quite a remarkable uh, quite a remarkable thing in addition to that is vince lee who's still here because i'm extending the amount of time he has to work tonight um he didn't <laughs> This wasn't something that that was probably on his job description when he applied anyway, but he is he's made it possible for us to live in the in the world of virtual hearings. And we didn't have the resources to do this to start off. I mean, the town has worked to help us out, um, but inspectional services has done it particularly and without then we could not possibly have done uh, what we've done. Um, Third is uh, Kelly Linema, who who actually writes all those reports that we talk about, uh, and whose ability to actually take charge of the 40 Bs and to figure out how to organize them and organize the record and get things out into the public in a timely way so that the people can see what's going on and react to it. A lot of that is what, what Kelly did. And she's always done it with the greatest grace in the world and she never she's she's terribly put upon and she never gave a hint of it at at any point because she's just she's just a wonderful person to work with and talented and and again made it made it possible for the proceedings to go uh, uh, as well as they did um, so i wanted to sort of reach out with a shout out to those people in particular and finish up with the chair because behind all of this um you know we all see what what the chair does in our hearings uh the way in which he has conducted the 40 b's kept us focused kept the people who are commenting focused behind the scenes there's also a lot of work that is done making sure the record is right making sure things get into the record making sure that the hearings are planned out in such a way that that they actually happen in a reasonably condensed form now i know that it will be a surprise to some of you to realize that some of those hearings were condensed but only once did we go past midnight and we did succeed if you can remember what it was like when we did these things in person we succeeded in tamping it down and keeping keeping the subject the way it was um the chair has been behind all of the administrative changes that have taken place that have made this a more responsive uh board and uh, uh except for his demonstrated inability to hold on to board members um this has been an absolutely stunning performance really uh and i i doubt that there's there's anyone else in in town who's the head of one of our board of condition uh, commissions who has has had that that degree of success in uh in taking over and 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 improving the board that that he's come over so i wanted to 
grant to just express appreciation and hope that the board is willing to express appreciation for all the all those four people did because it was a challenging year and they're the ones who enabled us to meet the challenge as well as we did thank you pat and i'll second sure. that and and i'd also add that mr hanlon in addition to other things that I could probably say has just been such an able scribe for us uh, throughout the year. And uh, I think that too is a skill that may not be appreciated as much as it should be. But I mean, in terms of all of the writing that got done with regard to the 40B decision for Thorndike, I, I know that uh, Pat was behind much of that. And I think that that should also be mentioned and uh, yeah, but the other things you said about the other people, for sure. Thank you. Mr. It's Chairman, a, I'd like to add my two cents. <laughs> Please do so. You know, you and uh, Pat have just done a job this year. And Pat, you deserve a huge pat on the back. Uh, not only your excellent writing and decisions, I mean, they are so far ahead of all the previous history of our decisions. I mean, you look back to the 60s, there were virtual comic books in comparison. And lastly, I would say you were kind of like the Boutros Boutros Gali of us. <laughs> when we were really jammed up and had loggerheads and nobody could really find a path out of the woods, you always seem to have come up with some kind of rational path that we come to a decision that would be legally defensible. And, you know, the fellow up the heights getting his pub was largely, you know, your svelte navigation through the legalese of the matter. And you'd be very commended. It's been an honor to work with you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Well Absolutely. Well Mr. Chairman, can I add one comment as an honorable? <laughs> Piedmont Street. Yes, sir. I just want to say, um, with this recent development around Thorndike Place, I would very much hope the board doesn't take it as some sort of insults the wrong word, but, but some sort of take it personally that it happened. Um, because you folks have put in such an incredible amount of work. And when you said, uh, what was it, Mr. Hanlon? Capricious and uh, what was the other word? A arbitrary, a arbitrary, arbitrary and capricious. I can't think of anything that is more opposite to what you guys had to do. And I just, I know there's a lot of competing interests in town. A lot of people have single issues that they follow pretty carefully and dramatically. However, you've got to balance so much. And um, please don't take whatever's going on with the land trust as any reflection on any of the work that you or Mr. Valerelli or Kelly Lanimar or anyone else did, because you did yeoman's effort. Thank you. Anyway, thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Moore, I would note to you that we do have an open associate position. <laughs> <laughs> if you, if the application I understand is going out the first of the year, if you'd be interested in applying. Look. Look, I, I, I may be uh, dedicated, but I'm not stupid. Come on. <laughs> After what I've seen in the past year, you think I would do more? <laughs> but no, thank, thank you for your vote of confidence, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, well, thank you, everyone. It has been a, a remarkable, you know, I don't know if it's, it's just a year. It's been a remarkable two years uh, that just sort of blended together. Um, you know, from just, you know, it's, the, starting with the heart the, the, the Heights Pub where we you know, were meeting, still meeting in person, and we were just about to get the documents on uh, Thorndike Place, and then we were scrambling to figure out how we meet online and how we all get email addresses and how we do all of that. And then, um, you know, we had a second, B, a second 40B then on top of that and running all those hearings, figuring it all out. It's, uh, it's been a, a, a great honor to to be head of this uh head of this board and just the the level of uh contribution from all the members and from the town and the support from everyone has just been really remarkable and 
there's certainly there's there's no way this board is I think emblematic of you know it it takes a it takes a town to run a town um, you know there were there were times where we were sort of you know begging borrowing and scraping what support we could get from wherever but I think we've you know we've gotten together a great team um, and a, a board that can keep moving forward in a in a very efficient manner so I really look forward to next year I think it's going to be a lot of fun um, I really appreciate everyone's efforts um, from all corners it's really very very appreciated thank you Christian so with that, it's everyone's favorite uh, part of the meeting. <laughs> Thank you for part, your participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I appreciate everyone's patience throughout the meeting. I especially wish to thank Rick Valarelli, Vincent Lee, and Kelly Linema for all their assistance in preparing for and hosting this online meeting. Please note that the purpose of the board's recording this meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of the proceedings. It is our understanding the recording made by uh, us and transmitted to ACMI will be available on demand at acmi.tv within the foreseeable future. Uh, if anyone has comments or recommendations, please send them via email to zba at town.arlington.ma.us. That email address is also listed on the Zoning Board of Appeals website. And to conclude tonight's meeting, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. Uh, vote of all present. Uh, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mills. Aye. Mr. Riccardelli. Aye. And Mr. Hawley. Aye. And the chair votes aye. We are adjourned. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yes. Yes. Great holiday. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas, all. Merry Christmas. Bye, all. Take care.